Growing up, I always felt overshadowed by my older sister, Lily. Our house was like a stage set up for her, a place filled with family members, friends, and relatives who'd gather regularly, drawn in by my mom's legendary barbecue and the promise of a Lily performance. Our backyard, with its neatly trimmed lawn and the big oak tree as a backdrop, became her stage. Dad would fire up the grill, the smell of sizzling meat and charcoal filling the air, while Mom made sure everyone had drinks in hand. Lily, sweetie, Aunt Marge would call out above the chatter. How about a song for us? Just like that, all eyes would turn to Lily. She'd jump onto a chair, golden curls bouncing, and launch into her best impression of Scalene Diane, belting out, my heart will go on. The adults would go wild, clapping and cheering as if they were at a real concert. Mom and Dad would beam with pride, Dad even wiping away a tear. And me, I'd be somewhere off to the side, trying my best to blend in with the bushes. It wasn't that I didn't want to join in, but whenever I tried singing, it sounded like a cat caught in a blender. And poetry, forget it, words tangled on my tongue, leaving me red face and stammering. Relatives would whisper that I was nothing like my sister. Even mom and dad made it clear who the real star of the family was. While Lily got shuttled to dance classes, singing lessons, and art workshops, I was left to my own devices. I didn't mind, though. I found solace in the dusty old books lining my shelves. The only person who seemed to understand was Great Aunt Maggie. She'd often find me hiding behind the garage or up in the treehouse, nose buried in a book. What adventure are you on today, Cameron? She asked, settling down beside me. I'd look up, grateful for her company. Ancient Egypt. I'd say, showing her the cover of my latest read. Aunt Maddie's eyes would twinkle. You've got a good head on your shoulders, girl. Don't let anyone tell you different. Those quiet moments with her were a balm to my soul, reminding me I didn't have to perform to be worthy. Still, being the forgotten child stung, especially every time Lily mastered a new song or won an award. My parents showered her with praise and gifts, new clothes, the latest gadgets. Meanwhile, I get hand-me-downs and tired sighs of exasperation. School became my sanctuary. I wasn't exactly popular, but I found my place in the classroom. I was determined to understand everything the teacher said, staying after class to ask questions or seeking out extra reading material when I needed more. By high school, all my hard work paid off. I was top of my class, finally excelling at something in my own right. I even made a few friends who didn't mind my quiet nature. But as graduation approached, our house became Lily Central. Mom was constantly helping her put together a portfolio for a fancy advertising and PR program. Oh honey, this campaign idea is perfect, Mom would gush, flipping through Lily's work. I'd roll my eyes and retreat to my room, burying myself in my studies. But one night, during yet another family dinner centered around Lily's college plans, something in me snapped. I'm going to college too, I blurted out. I want to study management. Silence. Then, to my shock, they burst into laughter. Oh, sweetie, Mom said, wiping tears of mirth from her eyes. We don't have money for that. You'll need to get a job after graduation. You're just not as gifted as your sister. I felt like I'd been slapped, but I'm the top student in my class, I stammered, anger and embarrassment mixing on my face. I get straight ass. I stormed to my room, grabbed my report card, and slammed it down on the table. Everyone leaned in, their eyes widening in surprise. Well, I'll be damned, Dad muttered, scratching his head. When did this happen? It's been happening for years. I spat, feeling tears prick at my eyes. Mom looked ashamed, but Dad cut her off. Look, it doesn't change anything. We've spent all our savings on Lily's education. There's nothing left for you, Cameron. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. You'll go work at my cousin Frank's restaurant after graduation. I turned and ran, ignoring their calls. In my room? I collapsed onto my bed, sobs shaking my body. But as I cried, something inside me hardened. Fine, I thought, I would find a way on my own. My hands clenched into fists. If they won't help me, I'll find another way. I'll show them what Cameron can do. The next few months blurred by. Lily left for college, surrounded by tearful goodbyes and proud embraces. Meanwhile, I buried myself in my studies with a fierce determination to graduate at the top of my class. More and more, I found myself at Great Aunt Maddie's cozy little house, my sanctuary from the tension at home. One sunny afternoon, as we sipped tea in her sunlit kitchen, she asked the question I'd been dreading. So, Cameron, she said, her kind eyes fixed on me. What are your plans after graduation? 
I stared into my teacup, swallowing hard. I, I don't know, Aunt Maggie, I admitted, my voice breaking. Mom and Dad won't help me with college. They said there's nothing left after paying for Lily. Maggie was quiet for a moment, then reached across the table and squeezed my hand. Cameron, dear, I've saved up a bit, and I'd like to give it to you for college. You're smart as a whip, and I'll be damned if I let that brain of yours go to waste. Her words hit me like a wave, and I burst into tears, overwhelmed by her generosity and the realization that my dreams weren't dead after all. Thank you, Aunt Maggie, I sobbed, hugging her. Thank you so much. Graduation came quickly, and when I walked across the stage to accept my diploma, I saw Aunt Maggie beaming in the crowd. My parents were there too, looking proud but a little uncomfortable. That evening, while I poured over college brochures, Mom came into my room, her voice syrupy sweet. Cameron, honey, your father's cousin Frank has a waitressing job for you at his restaurant. Isn't that exciting? I took a deep breath. Actually, Mom, I won't need that job. I'm going to college. Dad appeared in the doorway, frowning. And how exactly do you plan to pay for that? Aunt Maddie's helping me, I replied, holding my head high. She's giving me her savings for tuition. The silence that followed was almost comical. Then Dad's face turned red with anger. Absolutely not, he snapped. If Maggie's got money to spare, it should go to Lily. She needs a car for her advertising job next year. Are you serious? I shot back, barely able to believe what I was hearing. This is my chance to make something of myself. Don't be selfish, Cameron, Mom chimed in. Your sister needs that money more than you do. I straightened my back, my voice shaking but firm. This is my money now, and I'm using it for college. End of discussion. From that moment on, Life at home became unbearable. My parents either ignored me or snapped at me over the smallest things. After a particularly heated argument, I called Aunt Maggie, fighting back tears as I told her everything. Pack your bags, sweetheart, she said without hesitation. You're moving in with me. The next day, I packed my things into a cab and left, watching my childhood home shrink in the rearview mirror. As I arrived at Aunt Maggie's house, a weight lifted off my shoulders. The summer flew by, and soon, I was stepping onto the campus of State University. Thanks to my grades and Aunt Maddie's help, I'd been accepted into the management program I'd always dreamed of. On the first day, as I sat in my introduction to business lecture, it felt surreal. I made it. I'm really here. A month into the semester, Aunt Maggie called me, her voice unusually hesitant. Cameron, dear, I think you should sit down for this. My heart pounded as she told me about the latest family drama. Lily had shown up at home, announcing she'd dropped out of college, she was pregnant, and to top it off, her boyfriend wasn't exactly thrilled, he discovered she'd been seeing his friend too, leaving them unsure of the father's identity. I sat there, phone pressed to my ear, processing it all. Part of me felt a twisted satisfaction at seeing Lily, the golden child, fall from her pedestal, but mostly, I just felt sad, for Lily, for the mess she'd gotten into, and for what might have been. And so, life moved on. Aunt Maggie kept me updated on the family gossip, but I tried to keep my focus forward, on my classes, on my new future, and I'm proving, once and for all, what Cameron could really do. I no longer attended family gatherings after Lily's baby was born. A DNA test confirmed her boyfriend was indeed the father, but instead of the fairy tale wedding Lily had envisioned, he only agreed to pay child support. The final blow came when Lily, desperate for work, took a waitressing job at Uncle Frank's restaurant, the very job my parents had tried to force on me. When I hung up the phone, I felt a whirlwind of emotions, a small petty part of me wanted to gloat, to flaunt my success in front of them all. But mostly, I felt profound gratitude for where I was and how far I had come. Years flew by in a blur of lectures, exams and late-night study sessions. Before I knew it, I was walking across the stage, clutching my hard-earned management degree. Scanning the crowd, I saw Aunt Maggie beaming at me, tears of pride in her eyes. Thanks to my top grades and glowing recommendations from my professors, I landed a job as a manager at the Gilded Fork, one of the city's most prestigious restaurants. The salary was beyond my wildest dreams, and for the first time, I truly felt successful. With my first paycheck, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I went to the electronics store and bought Aunt Maggie the latest smartphone. When I handed it to her, her face lit up in surprise. Oh, Cameron, she gasped, turning the sleek device over in her hands. This is too much. 
I grinned, pulling out my own phone. Not at all. Now, let me show you how to use it. Over the next few weeks, I taught Aunt Maddie the ins and outs of social media. She took to it eagerly, especially enjoying Facebook's video feature. Soon, her page was filled with clips of her garden, her cat, and her famous apple pie at various stages of creation. I'd watch her videos during lunch breaks, always leaving a comment or a like. It was our way of staying connected, even when work kept me busy. One day, as I was preparing for the dinner rush, my phone buzzed with an unexpected call from my mother. We hadn't spoken in years. Cameron, she began, her voice hesitant. We were hoping you might come over to talk. After a long pause, I agreed. That Sunday, I found myself standing on the porch of my childhood home, hand hovering over the doorbell. Before I could press it, the door swung open, and my mother pulled me to a tight hug. Oh, sweetie, it's so good to see you. Inside, I saw my father, Lily, and a little girl I assumed was my niece. The atmosphere was tense but not hostile, as I'd feared. You look good, kiddo, my father said, his voice gruff but warm. We hear you're doing well for yourself. I nodded, still wary? I am? I'm a manager at the Gilded Fork now. Their eyes widened at the restaurant's name. My mother cleared her throat. That's wonderful, dear. Actually, that's part of why we wanted to talk to you. Over the next hour, they apologized for how they had treated me, admitting they'd been wrong to dismiss my potential. Then came the real reason for the reunion. Cameron, Mom said it glancing at Lily, we were hoping. Well, we were wondering if you might be able to help Lily get a job at your restaurant. I looked at my sister, who was bouncing her daughter on her knee and avoiding my gaze. Finally, I nodded. I'll see what I can do. No promises, but I'll ask. True to my word, I spoke to Mr. Reeves, the restaurant owner, about giving Lily a chance. To my surprise, he agreed, offering her a position as an administrator. Lily started the following week, and I watched her closely, half expecting her to fail. But to my shock, she excelled. She was punctual, efficient, and the customers loved her charm. Over time, we developed a cordial working relationship, that we weren't best friends by any means. Just when I thought I had everything figured out, the universe threw another curveball my way. This time, a positive one. One day, Mr. Reeves called me into his office. My heart raced, wondering if I'd done something wrong, but he grinned. Cameron, how would you like to help me expand the business? Before I knew it, I was overseeing the opening of not one but three new restaurants. My days were filled with staff meetings, menu tastings, and number crunching. It was exhausting, exhilarating, and everything I had ever dreamed of. The promotion came with a significant pay increase, and suddenly, I had more money than I knew what to do with. That's when the calls for my parents started. At first, it was small things. The roof is leaking, Mom would say hesitantly. We were wondering if you might be able to help out a little. Surprisingly, it felt good to say yes, to be able to solve their problems with a simple transfer of funds. It started with the roof, then a new water heater, and soon, I was funding a complete home renovation. As their financial situation improved thanks to my support, the infamous family parties resumed. But this time, things were different. Have you heard about Cameron's latest project? Mom would gush to the relatives. She's opening a new restaurant downtown. We're so proud of her. I'd catch Lily's eye across the room, and she'd give me a small smile. She was doing well, too, having recently been promoted to head administrator at the Gilded Fork. My girls, Dad would say, putting an arm around each of us, both making their old man proud. A part of me wanted to remind them of how they treated me before, but a larger part basked in their approval, something I had craved for so long. As I drove home that night, a sense of contentment washed over me. After all these years, I finally felt at peace. I had everything I'd dreamed of, a successful career, respect, and finally, appreciation for my family. I felt like I was truly standing on my own. But one lazy Sunday, as I sipped my coffee and scrolled through Facebook, my world came crashing down. Aunt Maddie had posted a video from one of the family gatherings I'd missed. I clicked, expecting laughter and chatter, but instead, I heard something that made my blood run cold. There were my parents, flush with alcohol and full of self-righteousness. My mother's voice, slurred but unmistakable, sneered, and Cameron, that ungrateful little freeloader, she barely gives us anything. We're not made of money, you know, my father added. That's right. Lily's the one keeping that fancy restaurant afloat. Cameron's just riding on her coattails. 
Some relatives nodded along, even adding their own criticisms. Lily sat in the corner, looking uncomfortable but not contradicting them. I stared at the screen, stunned. After everything I'd done for them, all the support I'd provided, how could they turn around and say such cruel things? Shaking, I scrolled down to the comments. My parents were pleading with Maddie to delete the video, but Maddie's response brought tears to my eyes. I don't know how to delete videos, and even if I did, I wouldn't. It's time everyone saw the truth. Cameron's the one supporting you, and this is how you repay her kindness. Shame on you. For hours, I sat there replaying the video, reading the comments, each one a fresh wound. Finally, I picked up my phone and called Aunt Maggie. Oh, Cameron, dear, she said gently. I'm so sorry you had to find out this way. They've always been like this. You just weren't around to see it. That night, I made a decision. I'm cutting them off. I told her firmly, despite the pain in my voice. No more money. No more help. They made their bed. Now they can lie in it. The days that followed were hard. My phone buzzed nonstop with messages from my parents. At first, they apologized, begging me to forgive them. But when I didn't respond, their tone turned sharp. We're your parents. You owe us. Each message twisting the knife. I held firm. I'd given them so many chances and they'd thrown them all away. Surprisingly, Lily stayed out of it. At work, she was professional and distant, and when I asked her about it, she said, I'm not taking sides, it's between you and them. I nodded, grateful for her neutrality, even though part of me wished she would stand up for me. In the months that followed, Aunt Maddie became my anchor. Our weekly calls became my highlight, her stories of gardening and baking bringing a sense of normalcy. She reassured me, you're doing the right thing, Cameron. Don't let them manipulate you anymore. Other relatives began reaching out, too. Cousin Sarah sent a heartfelt email, and Uncle Bob, my father's brother, called out of the blue. Kid, your parents are fools if they don't see how incredible you are. You've got family in your corner. These messages of support helped heal the wounds. I realized that while I might have lost my parents, I gained a family who truly appreciated me. As the year came to a close, Mr. Reeves called me into his office. Nervous, I braced myself, wondering if my family drama had affected my work. But instead, he smiled broadly and said, Cameron, I'm retiring next year. I want you to take over as CEO. I stood there in shock. Are? Are you sure? He nodded, more sure than anything. You've earned this. You're the reason this business has flourished. Walking out of his office, my mind spun with possibilities. The little girl who had once been overlooked and underestimated had grown into a woman who had not only exceeded everyone's expectations, but her own.